Yo, what is up guys and welcome back to the channel today. We've got another review on the Prime Icon moment, Saul Campbell. We're going to go through the card's Zito stats, clips and summary, as well as what those SPC requirements are for you guys to get your hands on it. Before we get into all of that, if I could ask you guys to please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that bell so you know when I upload and comment down below if you're going to be doing this SPC. And now, let's get into the review. So guys, this is the team that I used, Saul Campbell, and I played him, of course, in that centre-back slot in the 4-2-3-1 next to Tomori. And overall, my first impressions of this card, guys... I think this card's okay. I don't think he's particularly amazing. Um, I just think he's a very good center back. Given the stage of the game that we're at, I'm kind of used to my center backs being able to do a lot more. So I thought this card was good. But let's just get into the review. Saul Campbell, 6-2, low, medium work rates, right footed. Turtles can lose three-star week for four games played. No goal scored and no assists. Now, guys, the work rate's fantastic. The height, good. Um, the skill moves, of course, are pretty poor on this card. The weak foot is also really poor. And that kind of plays into another factor as well, which we'll get into shortly. Um, he didn't score any goals from it though, he is a very good set piece threat. But overall guys, I do think that skill moves and weak foot does hold him back a little bit. In terms of chemistry style guys, I put the catalyst on him. Because I feel like his defending and his physical are absolutely fine, you don't need to boost them. His pace does need a helping hand now that the stage that we're at in the game. And I feel like his passing needed a helping hand too, more than his dribbling. I don't really like to dribble too much on my centre backs if I can avoid it. So I wanted to boost his passing, which leads me into the attribute details guys. The key pros of this card, if we just look at the defending stats and the physical stats, guys, they're all fantastic, uh, apart from the stamina stats. Now, all 90 stats other than the stamina. And I do feel like because of his work rate, his stamina isn't too much of an issue. So that isn't really something you guys have to worry about too much. Uh, in terms of the key cons, guys, his pace is, is a little bit one. His acceleration is lower than his sprint speed. He does feel a little bit slower than he should in game. Uh, and his passing as well is really poor, guys. I think that's because of the combination of his poor uh, dribbling and his passing. So he can't really turn that well. And therefore, his passing does feel very sloppy at times as well. So that's why I give him the catalyst just to help him out on speed and then to help out his passing, give him a little boost in that regard and make him a bit more technically capable. In terms of the player traits, he's got the power header trait, no other traits to speak home of. And now that we've covered that, let's get into what the SPC requirements are for you guys to get your hands on it. So guys, getting into some of Saul Campbell's SPC requirements, 812p on the PlayStation, 765 on the Xbox, and 914 on the PlayStation, on the PC, sorry. So if we just get into the squads, we'll start off with the most expensive one, League Legend, which is an 88-rated squad with one Premier League player. The next one up is an 86-rated squad with an informed player and one player from England. Then it's the Arsenal one, 84-rated squad with an informed player, or for chance player, and one player from Arsenal. Uh, then the Tottenham one, an 83-rated squad with one player from Tottenham. Uh, and then finally, the 82-rated squad with an informed player there, as well as a silver and bronze squad now guys compared to the price of the cards tradable this isn't actually that much uh lower uh, we will go into that more in the summary as well but overall guys i don't feel like this spc is really worth it uh, it's quite expensive on all three of these cards that is pure low campbell and drogba where the three released together so that's just something to bear in mind as well that looking at the cost of all these squads is very high and you have to bear in mind that fodder will not come down as much as these cards will so it may not necessarily be worth it uh, given how much you can just buy his tradable card for but now that we've covered that let's get into a comparison between the 90 prime icon moments and the 89 rated prime icon so guys getting into the comparison between Saul Campbell's prime icon moment and Saul Campbell's prime icon now if we just look at the face of the card there is a 14 stat differential there on the face of it uh, as well as about a 70 odd difference there in the in-game stats as well so overall guys there is a little bit of a difference between these two but we're going to have a look at and see where those differences are because we do want to consider if this card is really worth it if we look immediately at the pace guys uh, there's plus three on both of those as well and that's just reflected in the face of the card overall for me guys this doesn't make too much of a difference because i do feel like Saul campbell's build makes him a little slower so i wouldn't really put too much weighting on this the shooting stat we're just going to ignore because it's not important at all to how this card plays uh, in terms of the passing guys the passing isn't actually that much better and the two key ones you want to look at of course are the short pass and the long pass now the prime icon moment is of course better than the prime icon but only by two in each stat category and with the right chemistry style it is almost negligible the difference if we get into the dribbling then guys there isn't that much again between these two the composure sees quite a decent boost but again nothing huge on this card which really leads us to the final section which is where we hope to see the most difference in the defending stats guys we do have a reasonable amount of difference there and that's something to bear in mind on this card is that there is a reasonable difference there between some of these defending stats now if we're if we just scroll down a little bit just to take a look at these you guys can see that the defending goes up by three but interception goes up by three heading accuracy up by seven defensive awareness up by two stand tackle up by two and slide tackle up by one so really the all the defense all the difference there is in the heading but if we go to the physicality guys you guys can see 94 physicality there compared to 90 98 jumping to 88 
83 stamina to 80, 98 strength to 95, and 95 aggression to 89. Now, for me, guys, if you look up and down this card, what I see is very little difference in how this card plays compared to his prime icon. Uh, so, therefore, guys, again, it's another factor against doing this SPC and even against grabbing the prime icon moment card. However, again, we will discuss this more in the final summary. For now, let's just get into some of the clips that I got with him. So guys, getting into some of Saul Campbell's clips, and what you guys are going to see is his general physical and defensive play in that centre-back slot. Now guys, leading straight into that point, the defensive play and the physicality of this card is the biggest factor about this card. He is huge and tremendously strong and physical in that centre-back role. Um, quite often, guys, you won't find that you, you will find that you won't get a matchup against him that can take him on, uh, with the exception of, say, someone like a Drogba, uh, where he can still hold his own very well. It's just a little more of a struggle for him. But against those smaller strikers, he really does manage them very well in terms of physical aspect. His defending is very good as well, guys. Tackling is very clean. Uh, into Perceptions are good and his general uh, strength in the tackle as well is very good complementing again his physicality if we move into his pace guys now this is one where i felt it was okay it wasn't particularly good it wasn't particularly bad his pace is what it is um he's relatively quick as far as center backs go but in terms of comparing him to the players that he'll be coming up against more and more often now he will struggle a little more as time goes on. Um, I do feel like that this, whilst this card is a very good defender, um, he doesn't keep up as well with those quicker players now as he would have done, say, at the start of the year when we had that mid and base Saul Campbell. In terms of his passing and dribbling, guys, I really did struggle with this card at times. I felt like his maneuverability wasn't great and his passing wasn't great either. So it means that you have to be very careful with how you use this card. He can get some easy mistakes in that defense because of a uh, careless passing or movement as well. And guys, other than that, I felt like this card was a good defender, not a great defender. Um, in the earlier part of the year, I used the mid Saul Campbell and I loved him in my team and I thought he was a fantastic defender. But the game has just outgrown this card, in my opinion. Um, I do feel like that he's just a very good centre-back now, not a great one. In this final clip, guys, just more of the same, uh, well defended, uh, standing in the middle there and taking the ball off the man. So guys, if we just get into this final Saul Campbell summary. Now, first thing I want to look at, guys, is the price of the card himself. 830 on the PlayStation, 600 on the Xbox, 850 on the PC. Now, this is important because when we look at the SPC cost, 812 on the PlayStation, 765 on the PC, and 913 on the 765 on the Xbox and 913 on the PC. Now, guys, again, if we just keep flicking back and forth between those, on the Xbox, it's still 100k different. On the PlayStation, it is only 18k now. And that is something that's really important to bear in mind, guys, is that this SVC really doesn't give you that much differential in terms of the cost. However, we will look at that just shortly. Getting into the stats, guys, of course, the physicality and the defending, both fantastic. Decent composure and reactions as well, and his pace is okay. Collins of the card, he can't move well at all, and his passing is quite poor as well. So you'd be looking at something like a catalyst for me, just to boost his pace to an elite level, give him decent passing. Or you could look elsewhere to be able to try and give him a uh, better defending, better pace, uh, sorry, better dribbling, better pace and better passing. The engine is quite good, but I just feel like you're wasting it if you put it on his dribbling, guys. I honestly would focus on the cast list. It gives him, in my opinion, the best all-round boost. In terms of similar players, we're not going to do that, guys. We generally do that in terms of uh, the other players that we play, which aren't icons. However, this card, very individualistic in terms of how he plays, as with all icons. The same for links as well. We all know who they link to, the strong links to uh, all English players, perfect links to all English icons, and of course, links to everyone else around them. In terms of the price comparison, guys, we're going to see where this card sits. Now, this is one of the most expensive cards in the game at this point in terms of center back slot now you guys can see he sits right below Nemanja Vidic's moments and right above Laurent Blanc's moments now guys for me this is quite a high price still for what you're getting I do feel like you get someone much more well-rounded in Blanc although he doesn't have the physicality um, or someone for only a marginal amount who is better uh, in Vidic so I would say that this Saul Campbell still slightly highly priced in terms of what I would be wanting to pay for him However, guys, when you look at this more importantly compared to the Icon SBC, uh, compared to the uh, Prime Moments SBC, you will see that this card really doesn't have that much difference. If we just go down a little bit, the A12 uh, cost of the SBC would sit right below where this Icon card is. And for me, guys, that leads me into my final recommendation, which is 
I would not be recommending you guys do this card at all. Even if if you do have untradeable fodder, I would be saving that for something a lot better. I just don't feel like these SBCs are good value, these three, particularly Pirlo, Campbell, uh, and Drogba. I do feel like Campbell's one is a little bit uh, of a loss here because the price of these will continue to dip, and I think they will actually dip below the Icon SBC prices before the end of the season. So I just can't see how this justifies it being worth it. Um, as more icon packs come out more and more often, you're going to see these prices drop even further. And for me, guys, I would not be recommending you do this SPC. Hold off on buying this card, the tradable version, until the price drops off a little more, and then I would recommend picking him up. I do think this is a good card, guys. Please don't misunderstand me when I say that I don't think he's worth it. This is a great card um, and really fun card to use. And if you've got an Arsenal past and present nostalgia like I do, then you can pick up this card through the SPC. However, guys, I will say again, I don't think he's worth that SBC cost. I think you just need to wait it out a few more weeks or a couple more weeks and then pick up this card. He will drop below 800k, guys, for sure. Uh, it's just the way that icons are going, especially with how cards are coming out now. Um, so just wait for that. Hope you guys did enjoy this review. If you did, please do smash that like button. Until next time, I will see you all in a bit.